Let me let me get into a couple of other things here. The beside Taylor Swift of all places or uh, people, uh, I was going to ask you about this the story as far as Ramp is concerned. And Ramp is the 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 rental the thing. The United States Attorney for the Northern District of Mississippi made uh, public the discovery of the rental assistance for Mississippi program, which is called Ramp. And there was a fraud scheme. And I don't think it could be better timing as far as the governor's concerned because he was taking a lot of heat on ending this program. But the news media did their disinformation on this one as well as everything else, and I'll tell you about that in a moment or two. But according to the release, uh, the judgment was entered for somebody named Silnancia Safford, 30 years old of Clarksdale. She was apparently convicted or arrested for a scheme to defraud the uh, the government out of $81,505 in ramp funds distributed by this Mississippi Home Corporation under the Coronavirus Aid and Relief and Economic Security Act. Uh, $81,505. She had a scheme where she put together some non-existent rentals or whatever it happened to be, but uh, th- that's probably one of more to come. The number of people without homes in South Mississippi is growing, According to this lady name, no relationship, of course, since that's your first name, but Christine Bryce. The rental assistant in Mississippi program, also known as RAMP, uses federal money, and she says there are a lot of people on the coast who are going to go homeless because of this. But I think where the news media is not focusing on, people who have already been approved for the program will continue to receive the rental assistance, and people who applied for the program before August the 15th deadline could be approved for the program. Nobody's mentioning that. Secondly, the emergency rental assistance program started in 2020 with the initial round of COVID-19 funding for states and continued last year with more funding and provided uh, provided, uh, people with up to 15 months of rental assistance. And I think whether it's on the coast or anywhere else, and I'll let you have the microphone, Bryce, but if some of these people are not working and have time to go picket during lunchtime, um, maybe they need to get a job. I mean, and, there, and there are some people who are down and out and certainly qualified for that. But I wonder about a great portion of them. Your thoughts? Yeah, well, you have a lot in there, and I'm going to unpack it uh, one at a time. Yeah. So first of all, uh, I saw the headline of the uh, corruption story. First of all, when there is money, particularly federal money, there's corruption, sadly. And yep. my whole career, I've been fighting that. Um, and just so you know, it's not just something like that. When we, uh, there's been stuff down here on the coast when you dealt with back going back to Katrina. Okay, so um, second, uh, I support what the governor has done on that because, to your point, um, it was to be a hand up during the pandemic, and it is clear that. Uh, we certainly are not where we once were. It is clear that we need people working. Um, I think I saw the governor quote somewhere where he said, we're, uh, we have jobs looking for people <laughs> um, and we need that. And I personally have seen the effects as a practicing lawyer. I've represented uh, different folks, some of whom have been um, landlords during the height of it and people would not uh, get out of the properties, even after all the extensions and everything that was going on. And it was one excuse after another. Now, to your point, people do need a hand up and they need help. Mm -hmm. And we understand that. But I talk to employers, um, on a consistent basis, and I can tell you, they are struggling to find workers. And I, I, myself in our law firm, we're hiring, uh, we have a couple positions open and we can't, uh, get people to work, not because they don't want to in, in our situation. I think it's because um, where the market is. And then uh, third, on the homeless side of it, um, look, uh, the coast does have a housing problem, but it's not related to this ramp pr- program. It's related to the number that we have jobs and that people are wanting to locate to the coast. Um, their homelessness is an issue. I see it in Pascagoula, Ocean Springs, uh, I think in Biloxi, Um, but those local cities are dealing with it. But it's not because somebody's been kicked out of their house because of rent. 
is because of other factors that go along with homelessness. And so um, I think the quote that you read from Miss Bryce, um, she's conflating two issues or wanting people to think that there's a problem, they're connected in some way when they're actually separate. I had a cut from San Francisco uh, that I played last week. I'll see if I can find that cut. But the guy basically said he was <clears throat> he was getting 600 and some dollars, and he lived in a tent on the sidewalk. And he says, why the blank did I want to move? Because he's got everything there. And he said, honestly, it was probably one of the more honest uh, interviews that I have heard. And, um, and I think he was receiving $250 uh, every month for food. Uh, which went a long way, of course. And uh, the, the other part was, uh, here it is here. Uh, and if you haven't heard this, it, 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 it's worth listening again. Where are you from? Uh, Louisiana, Texas area. How long have you been in San Francisco? Since uh, June. If you're going to be homeless, it's pretty easy here. I mean, if we're going to be realistic, they pay you to be homeless here. When you said that San Francisco pays people to be homeless, what did you mean by that? <laughs> you mean that literally? Yeah. I mean, I get six hundred and twenty bucks a month, dude. From yeah, general money. assistance, yeah. or you, what'd you do? How was that hard to get? Phone call, bro. Fucking phone call. Two hundred food stamps and six hundred and twenty bucks cash a month. Wow. Forget about it. Why wouldn't I do it? You know, it's free money, dude. Yeah. This right now is is literally by choice. Literally by choice. Like, why would I want to pay rent? I'm not doing. <laughs> I got a cell phone that I have Amazon Prime and Netflix on. So he's knocking out about 850 bucks a month uh, and got Netflix free. He got a cell phone free. That's why free. I live in Mississippi. Now, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's why I live in Mississippi, not San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, <laughs> it, here's what I would say. If anybody has um, wants to, to go west, young man, now's the time to do it because uh, <laughs> it's, it's a lot more profitable out there. I do want to switch attention to yeah, a couple of other things what, since Paul? you're in Judd. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I, <clears throat> you know what I'm – uh, the journey I've been on, but I've met, it's been amazing. I met a lot of people randomly who've moved here from California. Um, they're, they're leaving places like that. And I want to say, I don't, I don't fault people for being homeless. I think there's a yeah. distinction of the person. No, that you, look, look, we, we got a, we got a break coming up. So I will continue this on the other side. And if, if you need a disclaimer, it's this, you have to separate those people who are, who can work. Yeah and who can uh, take care of themselves, but they don't want to, from those that Correct. need to be in the basket, we need to help. I understand that. It's almost like you That's have right. to put a disclaimer so you're not targeted as yeah. the evil one. We'll talk <laughs> about that, medical marijuana, right. the initiative, and uh, your race that you just completed. All that with Bryce Wiggins coming up next. All righty, all right, let's get back with uh, the one and only Bryce Wiggins, Senator from District 52. Real quick, on a compressed amount of time here, uh, Bryce, what were your top takeaways from uh, the the Republican primary race? <laughs> um, in short fashion, one, that uh, people were ready for somebody besides Mr. Palazzo. The reality was that Mr. Palazzo had been given a chance and he uh, did not do the job. And you saw that and you saw it when uh, all of us, quote, challengers got behind uh, Congressman elect. I, I'm sorry, Republican nominee Mike Ezell. Number two, um, Paul, I was uh, in, and I should say this. It was a net positive by all stretches of the imagination. Um, but I was really disappointed at the turnout. Um, this was important, and it was a statewide congressional election that determines the future of the House of Representatives, and we had less than 15% turnout. I mean, Paul, yep. we cannot continue that. And I was, and myself, I'd been campaigning certainly for for seven to eight months. I know uh, Mr. Ezel, Sheriff Ezel had been campaigning for a year. I don't understand how you can have a campaign for a year and you get less than 15% turnout in a Republican primary. And I, I, something's gotta be done. I'm gonna look yeah. and see what we can do. Um, it's frustrating. And then number three, I think that um, it, I, I learned uh, a lot and it was, uh, you realize 
there's things that you uh, can control and things you can't, but uh, the people were so great and the people uh, so appreciated our run. They appreciated everybody stepping up and running. And so um, it was just, it was just great overall. And people have encouraged me and our team to keep looking forward. And that's what we're going to do. And I'm there to help uh, Sheriff Ezel when he gets in. Well put. Um, real quick, any anything that you have uh, scheduled as far as your committee on Judd A, uh, the, some tweaking, the medical marijuana, the initiative program, speak to those two. Uh, yeah, I have not heard any on the medical marijuana. I'm not saying it won't happen. Uh, from everything yeah. I've read, it's moved. Uh, it seems to be going well. Um, and that's good. Um, I will tell you uh, from in the wake of the Dobbs decision, you know, Lieutenant Governor Hoseman established this committee. I'm on it where uh, there's about six or seven of us on it where we're looking at mm -hmm. the family and children. And, you know, my history, I guess, or my work in early childhood and uh, also the DHS and CPS issues. Uh, we've got to make our state uh, um, as family friendly as uh, possible. I've been working on that from day one. So I think you'll see that go through Judd A. Um, and then there were things that didn't get passed uh, last year because of the uh, some of the back and forth. One of those is from the uh, task force that was uh, put forward on um, really uh, the domestic laws uh, that we've been dealing with. We've got to get our uh, court system straight and particularly in our family and, and family <clears throat> law area. One of those last year that didn't pass was the, uh, was the no what you call no fault divorce. Um, I stood in the Senate floor and read from the recommendation and said, our current laws literally are damaging to the families in this state. I had multiple senators stand up and say, this bill is needed because they personally had been through divorces where it was you it was weaponized and the house chose not to do that i'm caught uh I, i'm sure i'll be working with my colleague on the other side of the chamber to to make sure those things happen the the initiative process is that going to come up again in this session oh. or is it uh, put on hold well i hope so <laughs> i'm sorry i hope so i think it needs to yep. um i've told people that i support it uh, that it needs to be mm -hmm. done. You know, last year it got to the last day uh, and there was within the committee, I think that was uh, handling it. There was a discussion about uh, how many signatures. The reality is that needs to happen and I support it and I will, you know, encourage uh, my colleagues to push for that. Um, it didn't go through Judd A, but uh, it could it could do that. So I think you'll see yeah. it come, yes. Just wondering, what are your thoughts if 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 the initiative process were available? Do you think an abortion bill would be put on there for for an initiative? And how do you think that would fare in our state, Com facing what we have today with with the rape and um, the mother's health uh, as exemptions? Um, what do you think what would happen? Is your question, would it, would it end up on there? My question is, would you process? think abortion would be legalized in the state of Mississippi by no. a majority of Mississippians if it were on an no. initiative? You don't think so? No, I don't, I don't think it would be legalized. I think what you're going to get into is, these, uh, is the specifics, you know, rape, incest, yeah. things like that. But yeah. don't underestimate the voters. You remember, Paul, that we had on the ballot a, the definition of personhood. And the voters rejected that. And I yeah. think that I'm not, us I'm not, I'm not trying to, we're almost out of forward. time. I'm, I'm not trying to yeah. overestimate them or anything else. I'm just trying to figure them out when only 15% come to the polls to vote oh. in a crucial congressional election. Bryce, as always, sir, right. look forward to getting you in studio and the 2023 session. Thank you for spending some time with us, sir. Appreciate it very much.